Today we are rebuilding Hajduk Split in Croatia, one yeah. of uh, Croatia's biggest clubs, probably the second behind Dinamo Zagreb. Which is their main rivals, I believe. Isn't it? it is indeed, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, a lot of you guys suggested it in the comments. And Usually we don't do as many of the, the smaller nations in these rebuilds in such a short space of time. But you guys have been really supporting them. Yeah. Like the views haven't dropped off every time we do a, a smaller team. So we're more willing to do them if you guys are supporting them. So thank you very much, first and foremost. But yeah, Hajduk Split, I'm guessing, is going to be quite a difficult one for you I to get a lot of information about. It is, really, because they, they were part of Yugoslavia as well when yeah. they first started off. I mean, they were the best Yugoslavian team. They won, I think it's nine totals and so many cups as well. So, yeah. um, and then when, obviously, Yugoslavia folded... Um, they obviously joined the Croatian League, which I think was in 1992 or something like that. Yeah, that's probably when, yeah. that's when you, Yugoslavia sort of yeah. disbanded into different countries. But in countries. between as well, during the war, I read, they actually joined the Italian League. Really? Yeah. Uh, because the, because, because they the do German... join on to the yeah. countries. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and because of the war and the Germans invading um, Yugoslavia, they the players went got away from it and all that and so they just, they just joined the Italian League for one or two seasons Man, while the war was going on yeah, yeah that is kind and of funny. apparently they, they actually played an English army team yeah during the war I, I can't think where it was now but they, the actual team played them and they lost something like 9-0 but when the war had finished and everything was settled down again they asked to play a replay against the the, 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 German, the army England's army team and they actually beat them 1-0 the yeah. second time around so when they had the best players there they were alright then how funny yeah but yeah as you said there nine leagues in well nine league titles in the Yugoslavian leagues the final yeah. one was in 1979 so some way before obviously Yugoslavia disbanded the 1950 year that they won the league yeah they won the unbeaten the only ever team in Yugoslavia to win a league unbeaten wow okay yeah. uh, and then six of the Croatian ones and that's a long time since they last won that yeah, too, 2005. Is, yeah. Which, you know, when I was growing up, they were the biggest Croatian yeah. team, as you can see there. Uh, obviously, when uh, I was in sec started secondary school, when we got into football, 2001 to 2005, they won three league titles in that time. I always remember Hajduk split in the Champions League and, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So today, they, they have got some good players too, which I'm really pleased with. They just don't have a lot of money, which we're not expecting to. We've only no. got two million pound, no debt, which is good, but no money in the overall balance. I'm surprised to actually pounds. see that they got no debts because they have, over the years, they have struggled with money and, and almost gone the same way as some Yugoslavian teams went and just totally folded because yeah. they never had no money. Well, thankfully, they are still here uh, and we're still kicking. So we did have a bit of a transfer budget, but it's really hard to find any people, any players uh, in these leagues when I don't really know the league. So unfortunately, I didn't bring anybody in. And I thought this first season, let's just find things out. Yeah, let's go with it and just we've see what actually happens, got, yeah. yeah, like like I say, we've actually got some really good players too so i've gone for a very basic 4-4-2 we've got the players for it to be fair um so if i went to the best 11 we can highlight some of those players and some of them actually aren't in this uh best of, what is, right there we go don't know what happened there some of them actually aren't in the first 11 that i would be playing because stipe buick is a wonder kid on this game 19 years of age and he's very good indeed uh 2.6 to 4.2 million pounds that's a lot of money in this in yeah. this league uh, and he has a very high potential so maybe it's it's the case of we well, need to bet him in in the next couple of seasons and see how he does there yeah what i do think we have is two great strikers and another one out on loan now the one on loan marin Lubicic, uh, he's only 20 years of age, but if you look at his attributes, he looks class. Yeah. Don't know why we're loaning him out, because I actually think we're loaning him out to a club in our league, is it? Uh, Lask, no, so he's in Austria. But I don't know why, because, like, you know, that's not... It's a very strange thing for us to do, yeah. because he yeah. probably will be starting games. But anyway, he's out on loan. Hopefully, they don't have... They do have an optional future fee of £2.1 million. Pounds. We don't want that, do we? We do not want that at all, because he would, he would come back, and we could probably use him and sell him for a hell of a lot more. I would say he's young as well, isn't he? Yeah. Who isn't young, though, is Nikola Kalinic. He's 34. He's been around the block for yeah, a while. Yeah. Well, to be he? fair, he's played at Milan, Milan yeah. Atletico, Roma, Fiorentina, even played at Blackburn. And he came from Hashtuk to Blackburn. So that was his move there into the big leagues from Hashtuk Split. That's where he, he probably made a name for himself. Uh, and then his strike partner, Levaja, is probably our best player that we have in our team right now. He's quite experienced as well, 29 years of age. He's played at Inter. Uh, he has started off again at Hashtuk. So it seems like they, they go off, they have their European journey, then they come back. Yeah. If they haven't made it or they just feel like, you know, a swan song back in Croatia, they'll come back to Hashtuk Split, which I quite 
quite like. Uh, so he's a very good player, 29 years of age. We can still use him for, for the foreseeable as well. So Marco uh, will be kind of our, our best player going forward. But the rest of them, I don't really recognize a lot of the names. No. I've had to kind of just like use Daniel Sabasic. I do. He's a back at goalkeeper. We play for Monaco. He's not very good at all. The rest of them I have to, to kind of familiarize myself with as we go along. Okay, so this 4 4 2 then. As I say, it's very basic. We've played so many games going forward. And unfortunately, we have no European football this year because we faced Villarreal in the Europa so, Conference yeah. League. That's our team to come up against, isn't it? I, would, I actually think that's probably the, the most difficult one yeah. to face. If you look at all of these teams here, I mean, we got like the likes of West Ham, Cologne, and Fiorentina, but like there's some of these clubs I've never even heard of from like nations like Kazakhstan. There's a couple of Kazakhstani teams there, you know, a couple of nations that you, you like to think a Cypriot team there that I've never or haven't really faced up against quite a lot. So yeah, we got a difficult draw there. We actually did all right as well. We only lost 3 2 on aggregate. Yeah. We actually won one of the games, but unfortunately we lost 2 0 in the first leg. Disappointing, but still, there we go. Uh, we did overcome Gil Vicente in the, 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 the round before that. But in the league, though, I'm it looks a lot better started off really well in the league and we've yeah. not conceded very many goals no but that's good no i don't know why we play dynamo twice in what looks to be two weeks yeah um but there isn't a lot of teams in the league so if you look at the croatian league it's going to be another one of those fun ones again there's only 10 teams right so you play a certain amount of games by the looks of it you play each of the teams uh, more than just the twice yeah. so 36 games teams play each other four times there we go then yeah but it's still weird that you play twice in, in three games but yeah uh, so yeah we'll play against Dinamo so quite often four, four derbies four derbies the class is the ex ex eternal derby the eternal derby that's what they call it in this country yeah right mm. so I mean Zagreb it is quite funny they have very similar badges obviously the, the it's, Croatian, a, it's the Croatian the flag Czech, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I like Dinamo uh, Zagreb Stadium I must say like it's quite funny I find yeah. it hilarious when I see pictures of it because it looks like who blew your roof off <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it just looks like it should have a roof but it just but doesn't what I can read as well the fans don't like our stadium no mainly, mainly, I mean you have a look at it the racetrack yeah race track. Done, it was done for some um, Olympic Games or something or whatever and yeah. used for that and then they moved into it and um, yeah they just said that there's not atmosphere there as good as it was in the old stadiums today. yeah I mean, we always say that don't we it's 100%. not a good football stadium you imagine being beyond the goal with that the big part is where you so are so far away yeah you can't see it can you no uh, it does seat quite a lot of people though 35,000 yeah. seats there that's quite a lot same as Dinamo's another 35,000 seat but they're a lot closer to the pitch yeah the atmosphere is better I imagine. they got some good players as well Dinamo so it's going to be us too I think uh, as well as Rijeka and Osijek as well who uh, is going to be the, the three or four teams which, you know, is going to be up there or thereabouts. But yeah, we've done really well at the start of the, the season. We have dropped some points against Istra there. We lost to Osijek. Uh, but other than that, it's been quite smooth sailing with a lot of wins going into this first season at the start there. So after eight games, five wins, two draws, one loss. Same Good as start. Dinamo. Okay, so we'll simulate the first season and see how we get on. First season, and Get we win in. the title. Won it by a mile. 86 points, 13 points clear. What Look a goal, the goal difference as well. well. Yeah. Plus 60, and they only had plus 26. Oh, say it, mate. You score your goals, you're going to win things, isn't you? Absolutely. So we've completely dominated the league campaign there. 27 wins out of the 36 is a very high amount. And Lavaja had 30 goals, and Kalinic had 19. It's good. So he got a good average rating as well. For Sati in the uh, centre midfield role, got a lot of assists. You'd probably think he's probably a set piece taker as well, being a ball player. So if we do take a look at him, there's the Italian link. Yeah. There's the Italian link. He's very good on the ball, comes deep to get the ball, tries killer passes. Yeah, he's a, he's a quality player, so especially for, for this league. But unfortunately, he is out of contract at the minute. Uh, so we're going to have to try and snap him up before he decides to leave because he's been crucial for us and he's also played in a, in a very experienced career. So that's the first season that we have won for God knows how long, 2005 there, where oh. it's been completely dominated by Dinamo and won by Rijeka. Not bad, we didn't even make a transfer. We, we still won the league. No transfers, just, we'll probably just buy one. Some, we'll probably buy some players now and lose. Yeah, just one basic 4 4 4 2 tactic. I said, English three, tactics, I said yeah. three fours then. Yeah. We didn't play that many players. <laughs> how do we do in the other competitions, though? Did we get any further? We won the cup as well. Done the double in our first season. We've done the double. So I need it because they're both super, but it's this one, who, which is the, the actual cup. Yeah. 
that we have won. I think I remember but back reading back, about it. There's a, there's a Croatian Cup, which is probably that cup, and then there's a Croatian Super Cup. Yeah. That's probably... They've both got Super in the name, so yeah. we just need to work out. But it is this one that we have won. That's the main one we want to win, yeah. Yeah, so uh, back-to-back -back as well. They actually won it in real life last year. So we've won it this year as well. Uh, we beat Sibalia in the, in the final... I don't think they're in our league. No, they're in the second division there. So they've done really well to get yeah. to the final. That's fantastic for us. More cup wins. Two trophies down, one season in. And we're in the Champions League. And we're in the Champions League as well. Uh, let's take a look at the squad then. 39 goals for Lovadja, 26 for Kalinic. That's good. Huge, huge amount of goals. For Sati got 18 assists. Uh, and Amir, who looks like he played on the right-hand side, he got 10, as well as Kalinic also getting 11 as well. So, done really well in including a lot of different players uh, in the goals. Stipe so Buick did play quite a lot. We don't need anything going forward, though, really, do we? If, you know, if you're going to buy anything, it's going to be in defence more than anything, really. Kalinic is 35. That's what one oh, thing yeah, we need to be looking that. at. Didn't yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Uh, and, of course, we, we welcome back Marin. We'll be getting him back, are we? We're getting him back by that's the looks of it. That's good news then. Yeah, that's good news then. They so that haven't activated it yet. That could replace him then, couldn't it? But I don't think they will activate it because he played 14 games, started 14, and didn't score for them. All right. Either well, he... they are just not giving the ball because he is way too good for that league. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on there. Why he? Why they haven't been scoring with him? Okay, how much money do we have to to improve this side? Only 500k, less than 500k. We got a few players leaving, so we will be able to to mess around with the contracts and stuff, the the wages. Yeah. And see who we can bring in in the second season. Okay, Dad. One transfer on the outs. Stipe Buick has left the club completely out of my hands as well. I was rejecting offers for him. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, our board accepted just a. 1.2 million pound but because of the additional add-ons of potentially 5.5 million they accepted it uh, so he actually played one league game at the start of the season for us did really well and Inter Milan came in and made an offer of 1.2 million pound so we lose Stipe Buick uh, our left-sided wonder kid so that's disappointing to start yeah, things off at, at, the, in the, at the start of the season we've only brought in three players as well I found it so difficult to bring in players for this team let's start off with Balic who comes as a free transfer Croatian great centre midfielder and he can play in a number of different roles as well if you want him to play deep you can do that if we need him to play a little bit further forward he can also do that he has great player traits as well like arising, uh, arrives late in the player in the opposition's area so he will like to bomb forward and hopefully pick up some goals we're giving him the number 7 shirt as well so Balic comes in as a former player as well. Yeah. Never Not won. bad at all. No. Uh, on a free transfer. Another player we brought in is a replacement wonder kid for all the wonder kid we just left. We've got Noah Gabriel Simic, who's 19 and he's six foot five, but he plays on the wing. Imagine being six foot five and being that quick and, <laughs> and that aggressive and that like technical. It's quite funny seeing tall people run as well. I mean, Peter Crouch when he used to run, it's so funny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it, it must be a sight to behold, but yeah. there we go. So he, ha he has a great potential on the game. We picked him up on a free transfer from Borussia Dortmund. Again, he's Croatian. Uh, he came through the Borussia Dortmund Youth Academy, so we can't obviously see whether like he played for Split before or through Zagreb's Youth Academy or whatever, but there we go. He's banged and a goal in for us as well. That's good. He has as well. Yeah. And our final transfer, because we lost a couple of centre-backs, we always by somebody who's very well groomed don't we like yeah more turkey teeth again like gotta be uh, marlon torres he's colombian 27 years of age fantastic player really good and we've got him from the colombian leagues on again on a free transfer this is going to be a good starting center back now there is like a foreign limit rule in croatia but we were nowhere near it i think right. you are, you can only have a maximum of six off the top of my head and we only had three so bringing in marlon was no problem uh, because i usually i would just stay away because if i don't understand the rules i just won't bother yeah after the amount of problems we've had with work Shit. permits and italian leagues he's scored a few goals players. over the seasons as well so he's um on the all set pieces he could be handy couldn't he, he? could be corners. good even though he's only 5'11 so he's not the biggest centre back yeah. but we've brought him in because he's quite intelligent like that positioning of, of 14 yeah we're going to need that in this league so those are just the three players that we have brought in the tactic let's take a look at it obviously it's exactly the same as what it was before we don't, don't need change to change it, it no nope. uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm going to play Lubicic up top on that right hand side as the advanced forward 
for the simple reason he is the faster one of the two uh, and we want Levaja who's maybe the more experienced and the better on the ball to drop back because yeah. he can as you can see play in that number 10 role we want the other one to get a bit of confidence as well get a few goals behind his back that's I reckon it. he could just start going forward then couldn't that's he? it yeah. so Levaja being up front with somebody with the experience of Levaja uh, who plays as a more complete forward yeah. does everything whereas Lubicic we just want you to focus on the goals because you didn't score any last season maybe there was you know they were playing you in stupid positions you can see here they've got a right midfielder slot that he might have been playing like we don't want any of that but three goals in six appearances and one assist great yeah. start to the season if you look at overall 10 goals in 12 appearances seven of them came in continental competitions uh -huh. because obviously we've been playing in the qualification for yeah. the champions league let's take a look this is looking good it does on the it's the first of it but we ended up in the europa league right which i don't mind too much no no because obviously champions the money league, in the you're champions not league be great. In the champions league no. i mean they have played in the champions league yeah they got to the quarterfinals three times really that's the best they've done yeah so they, is that you know, like recently in like the newer no, format no, no, since no, the Champions League or I think was it going back previously? A, I yeah, think when they were back a few Yugoslavia. Years, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's obviously been quite a few Yugoslavian teams who have won the Champions League yeah. in the past. Yeah. Uh, so let's take a look then. So Ludogorets was the the team that knocked us out of the Champions League. There, uh, another club that dominates their league. Really, like a few people have mentioned how Bulgaria is just dominated by Ludogorets. Can we overtake them? That's that kind of thing. So coming up against them is always going to be difficult. They knocked us out four one in the home leg for us yeah. which is it's the home leg it yeah, done, disappointing we've we, we done well on the way leg yeah 1-2-1 one, one on the away you leg you the job done haven't you yeah we faced Karabag to begin with and then we faced Genk which could have been very I'm difficult that is a hell of a result yeah beating them 4-0 on the we second we know game. how good they are because of the Antwerp rebuild we did yeah. recently 4 all away from home Brilliant. 4-0 at home, yeah. which is insane. What a result that is. Uh, Lubicic got two in that in that game as well. So, in the league games, though, it's been all wins. Yeah. We can see a 6-0 there, a 3-1, 2-1 against Rijeka, 3-1 against Dynamo. Uh, Lavaja got a hat-trick, and that's away from home as well. Uh, and then we've got a couple here, a 3-1 and a 2-0. Great start. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Fantastic start, just what talk we needed. Talk about starts, though. Yeah. We were formed in 1911. Yeah. And the story was that the these two well, these people went to watch a, a match somewhere in Yugoslavia and decided to come back to split went into a local pub what do you reckon they were forms most teams that we've talked about students right yeah so they've gone and watched the game come back and thought right well, we want our own team in split so they've decided to do their you know build their it's there to lose a good friends and all that we were, we were good footballers so they decided to, to form their own side and in the local leagues, they were doing really well. And they managed to get into the, the um, Yugoslavian Professional League yeah. in the 1920s. And then um, they started off from there, really. Oh, wow. Um, so when they went through the... I mean, we just talked about the history of the Yugoslavian Leagues and all that. And they went through doing really well and all that. When they eventually got into the Croatian League, because obviously when it's finished, they've never been relegated out of the top league. Yeah. You know, it's a good little side. Yeah, I mean, I, I know there's only one team that gets relegated, but still impressive when there's only 10 teams in it. Yeah. We were talking about their finances. Like I said to you earlier, their, their finances hasn't been very good over the years. Now it is. The reason being is they are owned by the fans. Ah, always works. Yeah. When always they were having works. so much trouble and that, they decided the only way they were going to save the team, and it was close to folding. Yeah. The fans got involved, went to the council, the local council, and got them to take out a loan. And they, and they, the the, the, the council sort of supported the loan, but the fans bought the club. Yeah. And they were all each buying each you know, shares in the fans. They got eighty-one thousand fans members now. Yeah. So um, that's how this team sort of survives. And that's why it will continue to, yeah. because there's fans two, always have Apparently there's two teams in Croatia that's owned by the fans. I'm not sure which the second team was. Yeah. Probably could be Dynamo. Um, but yeah, that's how they survive. Well, there you go. Uh, obviously, it's 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 a work. It works really well in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Uh, we always mention it, didn't we? The, the, yeah. the 49 plus 1 uh, rule that they've got over there. Something that I would love to have seen in the Premier League is just never going to happen. No. Unfortunately, it's just never going to happen. No. People go on about the Super League. Premier League is basically the Super League, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because I mean, we've seen the money that Chelsea's chucking around and obviously Man City, they're getting... We, we, we're, we're recording this when they've just been uh, found guilty. Well, not found guilty, but like been, been told that they've been being, accused being yeah, guilty. Like nothing's 100, been... 100 offences. Yeah. So we're, we're still at the point where we're like... 
don't know what's going to happen yeah. with them. Uh, we could be doing a rebuild of them in League Two next year. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. But anyway, it's a great start for us at the start of the season. 18 points from a possible of 18, and we're playing in Europa League. Uh, let's take a look at our group. We've got Feyenoord, we've got Borussia Mönchengladbach, and we've got Mould, which is going to be three very difficult games. Yes. Two very difficult. Mould, you'd like to think we should be able to overcome. I'd, I'd be very happy if we managed to go through. Yeah. Very surprised is what I was looking for, really. Yeah. I can't see us getting past Feyenoord and um, Munch and Gladbach. The good thing is that this is the last time that if you finish in third, you qualify for the the tournament below it. Yeah. Uh, so we'd go into that conference league again if we did finish in third. But that's the last time, this is the last season that that will happen because obviously we go into the new format, that's not the case anymore. You do the league phase and then if you're out, you're just out. Yeah. Uh, which I prefer to be honest. But that's the one good positive about that new format. Uh, we're still yet to find out if there is any positives <laughs> outside of that. Uh, okay, we'll simulate this next season and see how we get on. Second season, and we finished in second place. Four points. Yeah. Uh, Dinamo's obviously bit back. They've come well, back firing. Down, lost five games, drew six. That's where we lost it then. Yeah, drew six games there. So teams that really we should be beating. Yeah. I mean, I'm only looking at that and thinking Ozajek maybe. Well, when you're looking at the two each, uh, three each, two each. When we did get beat, we got we got hammered. We got topped. <laughs> so not great. But yet we still have the two top scorers of the league. And our goalkeeper has 62. the third amount of clean sheets. It's just that Livakovic has double the amount. Drawing games cost you. We yeah. can afford to uh, Absolutely. do it, really. We have so many players in man of the matches, the highest average ratings. We've even got one in the most assists. It's mental, isn't it? How yeah. that's like, how we haven't won the league. When you can, when you look at these statistics, you think, wow, uh, Hajduk Splits dominated that. We haven't dominated the league though. Four points we lost it by. Now, other competitions. How have we done? We were out of the quarter final in the conference league by Leicester. So we finished in third. We got six points there. We won two games, both against Mould, uh, where we didn't concede a game, didn't see, concede a goal, and we faced Leicester in the quarterfinals. I'm more surprised with Leicester being in that, in that league. Yeah. <laughs> we won the first leg 3 0. Oh. We lost the second leg 5 0. Uh, the knockout playoff, we went and beat uh, Maccabee Tel Aviv. And then the round of 16, we knocked out Braga. That's a big a result. Win. Yeah, because yeah, they got money now. Yeah. And they got some decent players too. So we've we done quite well there. Leicester went on to the final. They lost in the final Marseille. against Marseille. Extra time. Difficult. Yeah. In the cup, we faced Dinamo in the semi final. Then obviously, I'll, it's a 50-50 then, isn't it? I was up with the win the cup again, because in the 1970s, which was our best years, yeah, they actually won the Yugoslavian Cup five years in a row. Ooh. So I was hoping really that we could have, especially winning it the first season, I thought, hang on, we could yeah, do this yeah. again. I think it was 72 to 77, something like that, yeah. they won the cup. And, uh, Has Dynamo done that? They probably No, have. they haven't. No. Well, all the way back until 2005, as far as we can yeah. go there, they haven't done that there so i mean obviously this only goes to uh, yeah that's right yeah the 92 Yugoslavia season when starts it, yeah uh, but nobody's done five years there we've got a couple of threes but that's that's as far as it is yeah unfortunately we can't do that but nope. patreon members might be able yeah, to do that that's right yeah remember after the five seasons you get the save gang file on the five pound tier patreon.com forward slash megaloot gaming thank you everybody who's been signing up recently really do appreciate it and everybody's continuing to sign up and uh, and has a look every single day okay not bad then, just not great. No. We did all right in the... Disappointed with that. Yeah, we did all right in yeah. Europe, I think. I think we made a good of a count ourselves in yeah. Europe. Uh, Goals-wise, though, it's very impressive because 51 from Lavagia. 94 goals in two players. You cannot argue with that at no, all. No, they did their job, didn't they? I mean, after seeing that, I'm really disappointed we didn't win the league. Yeah, or cup. Yeah. yeah. 20 assists from our new player that we picked up on our free transfer, the young Croatian. Noah Gabriel Simic, the six foot five monster so who plays out on the wing. <laughs> Fast pacing uh, six foot five player. Uh, six foot six now, he's gone up. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's growing. By season five, he'll be seven foot two um, and he'll be 20 pace and acceleration. Well, you you watch. Really good uh, uh, statistic wise, just not good on the pitch because by the looks of it, both our wingers had nearly 20 assists each. Yeah. Really strong from them. How much money have we been given though? At the minute, it says zero, and we've ended the season. So whether that changes, we'll have to find out. But before we do, today's video is sponsored by Manscaped. What's a resolution that we can all keep to this year? Well, our friends at Manscaped have one, and that 
is better hygiene. And I can also help with that because I happen to have a 20% off plus free shipping code when you use manscaped.com using code Omega. The perfect way to instantly improve your hygiene is the Platinum Package 4.0. This includes the Lawnmower 4.0 and I use this on a weekly basis with that ceramic blade and skin safe technology. And I never nicked my Bojangles. That's because it is designed to reduce the nicks and cuts of your delicate parts. It's waterproof and has a light on it so you can use it in the shower with all the lights turned off if you really wanted to. The package also comes with a nose and ear trimmer, something I've really needed since turning 30, as well as a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, something I haven't needed. But I do use the body wash and deodorant and I'm currently wearing the Manscaped boxes as we speak because they are sensational and that handy travel bag is part of the essentials for every weekend when I'm traveling the country for wrestling. And there's a reason why in the men's locker room I have so many people coming up to me and questioning about Manscaped and I've made so many sales just on my desk right here. I have also the redefined perfume, I have the shears kit, and I even have the lip balm. I'm, I'm manscaped out. There's so much on the website that you can use, and my code works for all of it. So once again, manscaped.com, use code OMEGA, you get 20% off plus free shipping. I'll leave a link at the top of the description. Now, unfortunately, we never got given any money, uh, so I had to make a couple of players... I had to sell a couple of them just so I can bring somebody in to offer them decent enough wages yeah. for them to say yes. So Cl Christian Glauder is the man that I have brought in. He's a left back, quite a good one. We lost our left back, unfortunately. He's Spanish, 28 years of age. We got him from Albacete, free transfer. He actually scored five goals last season, so we'll, we'll see if he does that for us. Yeah, we have um, but he can also play centre back too. As you can see, we've lost quite a lot of players. A lot of them are Croatian as well. They're just not wanting to like renew their contract. It's really strange. Yeah, yeah, we think they we're the second best team in the league this season. Yeah, so. that's unfortunate. Uh, which has meant that I've had to have a look at things a little bit because obviously we haven't really done much uh, other than that first season. We haven't really managed to do anything in that second season, capitalise on that. So what I'm looking at now is not securing anybody in. And this is going to be my telltale season. Yeah. If you don't cut the mustard this season, you're gone. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so let's take a look then because schedule-wise, we have done very well after Definitely. me telling them that. We yeah. started off with a 12 nil win. Lubicic is actually just gone mental with the goals like if you don't see his name it's probably because he didn't play yeah <laughs> um he's he's scored so many so we yeah, won we well, won the first europa conference or europa league 16 nil <laughs> then we played aek line line cast that that team i said i've never played against yeah we play against them now uh from cyprus we beat them 4-1 then we defeated Rakal in the next leg 1-0 on both both legs there and we've gone into the Europa League league phase which is great in the league itself we've only actually lost one game that is to Ozajek uh, just a couple of days ago 3-0 yeah but the rest of the games we've managed to win and they are the games that we should be winning yeah in all fairness we haven't actually played Rijeka or played Zagreb yet uh, which is obviously the two more difficult ones in our league so yeah we're in Europa League that's going to be fun our fixtures in Europa League let's take a quick gander at who we come up against maybe we can defeat a big team because we've got Lille we've got Sevilla the kings of this competition yeah we've got Aberdeen who are in a bit of a turmoil in real life yeah, right they now. Are, they, yeah. they are they're manager, they? yeah and we can get our revenge Ooh. on Villarreal if we can we need to there don't we definitely yeah. So if you want to qualify, that's the teams that we've got to beat. Because if we don't qualify, you're out of the competition now. Nada, you won't get anything. Okay, so we'll simulate this season. See how we do. Third season and we're in second place again by 10, 10 points. points. Yeah, what did we do wrong there then? Uh, we actually ended the season Brilliant. really well as well. We won all five games out of our last five. So we've had obviously a bad middle, I'd guess. Lost eight games. We had so many goals scored for us again. It's the defending that's not, not doing the, no. the job for us because we've got the highest average rate in there as both our two strikers. We've even got Bal Balic there who's getting the third most assists in the league. It's just the defending that's costing us, unfortunately. Ten points behind Dinamo, which is usually what the league looks like. Yeah. But then we won the first season. Whether that was a fluke, I don't know. Whether this tactic was a one-season wonder. Yeah. <laughs> Whether the players that we lost yeah, have been detrimental yeah. to us. We've lost quite a lot of players on free transfers that I haven't really highlighted. Whether they were a lot of really good first-teamers. Uh, and obviously, Stipe Buick, who left. So, not great. What about other competitions, though? Did we salvage it in the cup? 
No, okay, quarter final, knocked but knocked out by uh, Varizdin, who I've yeah. never heard of before. Um, knocked us out of there, though. And the you round of 16, Sevilla. The kings of this competition. They've gone through, and Man United beat West Ham in the final. Man United? Yeah. Their biggest loss outside of England, apparently, Okay. from what I've read, is 6 0. To Hashik Split. To Hashik Split. It was, only, it was only in a friendly. Yeah. And I tried to find out what Man United players play, but I just couldn't find it. I couldn't find the game because of it being a friendly. But it did say, though, that um, Split had beaten 6 0, which apparently was the biggest defeat by Man United outside of England. Wow. A nice little watch. I'd love to have known when that was. <laughs> yeah. It's probably under Solskjaer. <laughs> yeah, <shit>. <laughs> we obviously did really well in the league phase then. We finished in fourth in the league phase. We I played 1 6. We did beat Sevilla in the league phase. God. That's a shame, isn't it? It's we result, though, drew to Nantes and we lost to Villarreal. But by then, that was our last game. We'd already qualified by, yeah. this, by the looks of it. Uh, so done really well there. Rome obviously finished top. We actually finished above Man United, who ended up winning the bloody competition, which meant we went into the round of 16. We didn't play anybody else and we lost to Sevilla. That's a shame. Uh, and obviously in the cup competition, we also didn't do very well. So let's take a look at the squad then. The statistics, 47 for Lubicic and Levaja got 38 there with a good amount of assists. A lot still, of good assists there. Still banging in the goals then, mate. Yeah. So it's definitely the defence that's letting us down. It is definitely the defence. Absolutely. We, how much money do we have to increase that? Six. Where did that come from? Hello. Six million. Okay. Right. That's very different. We'll, we'll get, see what we can do then. Better do something about it, didn't you? Right. Okay then. On to the fourth season. Okay, I spent £4.5 million. That's a lot of money then for this yes. team. Yes. So, a couple of free transfers. One of them from Man United. Oh, hello. Let's take a look. It is the goalkeeper. Czech Republic, quite a good goalkeeper as well for this standard of league. He's going to be our first choice. Got an interesting little, little fact again, and it involves a goalkeeper. Okay. Right? You know what I was saying? How the students started the team and they eventually got the, into the U U Yugoslavia League. Yeah. Um, in 1920. In 1924, Yug their international team, Yugoslavia, played Czechoslovakia yeah. in a, an international game, and 10 of the players were from Split. Wow. That's how good their team was. The only one wasn't the goalie. And the only one wasn't the goalie. It was an Italian goalkeeper they had in the team at the time. Yeah. But the rest of the 10 players all started their game. Imagine being the split goalkeeper. <laughs> See you later on, lads. Have a good time in the international. Yeah. I'll be right back here. Yeah. I'll be training with myself because yeah. they didn't have subs back then did they they no, didn't have very big squad sizes no, a couple of make. extra players that's about it yeah that's hilarious so that goes to show what good side they built yeah when they in first very started short, yeah. short amount of time but yeah Kova comes in as our young goalkeeper i quite like the look of him to be fair so we'll see how he does uh, another free transfer that we brought in here salesia he is croatian six foot two 29 year old center back we good. needed a good center yeah. back he actually comes in from the greek league he's I mean, he's moved clubs quite often, hasn't he? Like yeah. in the last few years. We're like his fourth club in five years, and he hasn't gone for a penny yet. He's been uh, in Croatia still... before as well, played in the Croatia lot, so. Yeah. He knows our league. He actually scored eight goals last year. Yeah. Had a very good high average rating uh, playing in the second league in Greece. But there we go. Then I went for Gabriel Rivas, who is again another centre back and Colombian again. So yeah. this one, though our new gen right. so he doesn't actually exist in real life he looks quite good especially for being just 18 years of age and he is really what i spent the money on 3.1 million pound yeah. bringing him in but i think i've seen him and i thought hmm you bring him in you use him he's good he develops you sell him for a profit yeah definitely that's what they that's what teams are gonna be doing in this league yeah bringing rivas in let's see what he can do for us let's see how much he can develop then i brought back a couple of old boys yeah Luck of this. So first one, I mean, he's he never played for Split, I don't think. He didn't, no. Uh, he came through the Ozajek, uh team, but he went to Manchester City and then hasn't really played. He went on loan uh, to Ozajek to begin with and scored 17 goals after they signed him for £3 million. Pound. He scored 17. Then he went on loan to Copenhagen last year. Only got four, but I loaned him and he's got two in three appearances so far this season. He's a really good uh, striker. Dion Drenner, Belgio. I've done a YouTube short about him as well, so he did really well for me in that. Six foot five, he's a monster. Good player at attacking yeah. the ball and he's very good off the 100 ball 100% well. playing for his country, look. 
Yes, yeah. One cap, one, one cap, goal. One goal. We'll take it. And then we bring back Stipe Buick just a year after he left. Yeah. Uh, he's back on loan. We need you. We needed him. And the funny thing is, as well, he actually gave us an optional future fee if we wanted it, so they can't like him that yeah. much. Six point five million pound. I'm not sure. Where I don't we'll think have we're that. Afford But no, there we go. Uh, we brought him in from Inter Milan. Let's see what he can do. He's got a goal and assist on his return straight away because he only scored. He only played one game for them last year. Yeah. After he signed for them and didn't even play for like their youth academy, so they just. Most he scored for us was two goals in one season, so he's already yeah. almost <laughs> yeah, there. halfway there. Yeah. He's like, I'm having the season yeah. of my life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's see what Stipe Buick can do in our team. Uh, I think we needed to change things around tactically as well. That's two seasons where we haven't really done anything. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone more attacking. <laughs> <laughs> no, so let me explain a little bit more. Go on in. During pre-season, and we're going to see the results, I had a different formation where I had two players in the defensive midfield role because I thought we need to pack out this midfield a little bit more and make them a little bit deeper. Yeah. Then I found we weren't winning at all. Right. So we had to change things around. Now, we've got Lavagia, we've got Belgio, and we've got Lubacic, who are all scoring goals. And how harsh would it have been if I dropped Lavagia or Lubacic? There is a good English saying, isn't it? Good form of defence is attack. Yeah. So, all right, go with it. Lavagia is really good in that role there. Well, and the be in it, yeah. inverted wing backs will help the midfield. That's yeah. what they do. They go and sit in here very much like Man City. So we'll see how this does across the season because we cannot judge it on these results because it's <laughs> recent change. Hang on as a you minute. Can see here, as you can see here, uh, four four two with two DMs. That's what we played, but we lost against Dinamo. So we were winning games that I thought we should be winning nice and easy. Although, yeah. but then the two teams that I thought we would we'd struggle against, Rijeka and Dinamo, we couldn't get a win. No. So I think right, okay, that that's because if you look at it as well. I didn't sign Belgio until quite late. Belgio was 11th of August where I started playing both of them and the 12th of August. By then, we had already played half of those games. Uh, so that's round about here. So I'd already played quite a few games there. Then we sort of started bringing him in and I'm not really playing it. He's coming off the bench quite often, but then you can see he's starting to score goals. I don't really know who to drop. Mm. Let's go three up front or kind of three up front. Yeah. So, we can't judge the tactic on what we can see here, but we can judge it going forward. We are, however, in the Europa Conference League this year. We beat St. Johnson across two legs to put us into the UEFA Conference League. So, we can check our fixtures in this competition. They're not going to be too extravagant, but we do have a trip to Slovan Bratislava, Drablonek, which I think is the Czech League, Larm, which is Ireland. So, yeah. we're, we're going to go to, to Northern Ireland uh, and have a have a go at Larn. Proper village pitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, so some some quite entertaining games that we've got coming up in UEFA Conference League. So we'll, we'll see how we do in that. Right? Uh, yeah. Okay. We, we haven't got a bad. We've we've made it to two semi-finals. Yeah. One's in the UEFA Cup in 1984. Yeah. And I got to bring this one up, and you know why I'm going to bring it up. They lost in the semi-final to Spurs. To Spurs. He went on and won it as well, didn't they? He went on and won it, yes. Maybe Anderlecht in the final, which that's we right. established in the Anderlecht video. Yes, that's right, yeah. So, um, and the other one, they lost against Leeds. Yeah. In 1972 in the Cup Winners' Cup. Yeah. 1-0 on aggregate. Right, okay. So they were unlucky, really. They nearly, they nearly made two finals and come up against two, at those particular times, two Very strong teams. British sides, yeah. yeah. So, okay. so they, they haven't got a bad it, a European record. They just can't get that final step of getting into the final game. Yeah. They? So it's yeah. a shame, really. So Until now. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right, let's simulate this fourth season and see how we do. <laughs> fourth season and we're back winning the yes. title. Get in. I like this tactic. I think it's really good. Uh, <laughs> great stuff. Okay, so... 82 points to their 75, so we won it by a nice little margin yeah. there. We won 25 games in total, lost only four. four. So there you go, see? Exactly, and one of them obviously was that one at the start of the yeah. season. So goals-wise, though, Belgio scored 22. Lavaggia only scored 18. That's a lot less than what we've been seeing when we've been yeah. finishing in second place. But the clean sheets... Kovar got 13 clean sheets right go. behind Livakovic, who is obviously the best goalkeeper in the league. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. What about the competitions? Did we reclaim the cup again? Yes, we did. And we got to the semi-final again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by RC Lens. You oh. do have quite a good team, to be fair. We've nearly France. done it. Nearly done it. Uh, they beat us 4-2 on aggregate. We won the second leg Leicester as well. Leicester there again. They went and faced Leicester in the final and lost 
5-0 at the Veltins yeah. Arena in Gelsenkirchen. So, in the Cup final, did we beat Zagreb in the final? That would have been nice. No, Ozajek, 3-2 in that final. Uh, with Lubicic getting the most goals in that competition. Look how funny it was, though, because we went, we scored in the 68th minute. They scored in the 80th. We scored in the 87th. They got one in the 89th to equalise. And like, right, lads, extra we'll concentrate time. now until extra time. Yeah. And we'll win it there. And then Lavaggio was like, nah, mate, 92nd minute. <laughs> Crush your dreams and we'll win the cup. We, we deserved it, though. We had 27 shots of 14 on target. If you're going um, to win a, if you're going to win a cup final, it's brilliant scoring in the last seconds. Oh, yeah. you know, they just can't do nothing about it, can no, they? No, no. It just breaks hearts. Yeah. You, know? you just see all the players just go to their <laughs> yeah. knees. Oh. <laughs> Goals-wise, then, this is what I like yeah, to see. look at that. Three of them. Three of them up there, which actually totals to more goals than what we've scored in previous seasons. Yeah. And they've all got high assists, which obviously means... They're Nobody passing ever. to each other yeah, as well. It's good. Uh, of course, we are going to lose Belgium now and Stipe Bjork. They're going to be going back to their clubs unless we can cop up the funds to get both of them because they do both have options to we buy. We to a semi-final, so we've done well. Yeah. Um, so there might be a bit of money there for us. Uh, there's only four million, oh, we which can't even get one of, one of them, one of them I don't going. think. <laughs> uh, so we'll go forward next season and see how we do. Well, Dad, I believe in bringing him back. Yes, that's a good sign. Sign him on a permanent I'd, deal. I'd we just signing him, really. Yeah. Uh, we might have paid £2 million more than what Inter Milan paid for him, but he had a good season last year, very high average rating as we well. We would look at it as he played two seasons for us and we won the league both times. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. He got bought during that second season before he left. And he's got better as well. He looks fantastic. He's an elite player for this league now, this this standard. He's very good for it. 23, he knows I've had my move and it didn't quite work out. Yeah. He's come back. Unfortunately, though, we did lose Gabriel Rivas. He moved to Man United. However, they were very kind and let us loan him till the end of the season. Right. So we still got him for us. But unfortunately, yeah. Patreon members, you, you won't with, have him. Did you do that with your contacts, did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right, Eric. Look, mate. Yeah. Me and you are pals, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, I've always had your back. Uh, so, yeah, they signed him for £8 million. As I said, you get your money back for him. Yeah. £3.1 million is all we spent. £8 million is what we sold him for. And we actually turned down loads of offers like PSG, Liverpool coming in. And then the Maggie United one was accepted. But they offered to loan him back. And I was like, yes, let's do that. He's good. He's amazing. I don't know why United would want a player like that. Because I don't think he's going to be that amazing. But still, we'll, we'll see. For our league, he's great. Yeah. Now, we have also signed two other players. This guy is going to be the replacement for um, Belgio up front. He's 6'3". So, not quite 6'5", but he's 6'3", nope. but yeah. he's also very good in the air yeah. and has great attributes. Looks a good player, yeah. He does look very good. Quite experienced German. He's played in Germany and in Greece. Scored quite a lot of goals as well. 10 goals Ten there goals in, the, in season, the Greek yeah. Super League. Yeah. And then finally, we've got another free transfer from Vizela, and that is Samu, who is a Portuguese player who can then give Lavaja uh, a little bit of a break because he is quite old now. Yeah. I think he's like 34, so even though this guy's 30, <laughs> we can still rotate them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and coming in as a free transfer. So Lavage is 33, but he will turn 34 during this season. And his physicals are starting to decline a little bit. So it gives him a bit of a break, doesn't yeah. it? So let's take a look there. Now, tactic, I don't think I needed to change it. I think tactically, we, were, did, yeah. we found something quite nice there with this uh, this diamond formation. But what I will do is I'll go and have a look at our best 11 so we can take a look at that. In this final year, we got Lavaja up front there with Lubicic, and we got Krovinovic, who is actually the guy that was starting at the club, I think, who uh, our assistant sees as kind of our best player in that role. But yeah. I probably wouldn't. I'd probably say Samu. I've been playing Samu in the preseason, um, and he's been quite good there. Well, We'll just see how it plays out. In the schedule then, let's take a look because we've had a little bit of a ropey start. Uh, we were in the Champions League uh, qualifier, we got through by the skins of our teeth. We won 4-1 in the away leg and lost 3-2, which means we are playing Champions League football this year. Look who we're playing Very against. Nice. Some. some big teams. We'll yeah. get to that. We lost to Dinamo, unfortunately, twice at the start of this league campaign That's already. Not, good, though, is it? not at all. Uh, we also drew a game there, which we really shouldn't be drawing. Okay, so... We'll focus more on the Champions League for now and we'll take a look at the league at the end of it because we've got some big boys in there. AC Milan, Leverkusen, Chelsea, <laughs> Man City and Atletico at the end there. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Top eight? <laughs> <laughs> Top eight, easy. Yeah. Definitely top we'll eight. We'll go for it, actually. Uh, this could be the surprise season. Yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah it will be the surprise factor. got to believe in yourself, and you? Okay, we'll see you it's fifth and final season. Before we go, see though, all, okay. you know, I'll try to find someone out with the kits and that. The kits, yeah, which, sorry, I didn't download the kits so we can have a look at them on here. Yeah, the away kit is the original kit that they started off in. Yeah. 
blue and red stripes, but um, it only lasted for four seasons, I think. And I don't think they liked it because it was too close to other teams. Uh, the Ketsu, they actually, four seasons' time, they went to the White Kit and it's been the White Kit ever since. Yeah, which is also very similar to a lot of the clubs in that division as <laughs> yeah, well, from yeah. what I can see. Yeah, I mean, I think they, the, the red and blue is mainly because of the uh, their badges, all red, white and blue yeah. and all that. So you can see why they went that way, but um, it was too close to close rivals, I think it was. Yeah, the Zagreb's where they used. kit is yeah. very much blue with a red and white yeah. tint, isn't it? Uh, so always going to be quite similar. I think, like... I always find it really funny when uh, teams from nations have very similar kits to the nation's flags. Yeah. Because I think in... Uh, or, or they all have very similar, like, in the Netherlands, how many of the top clubs all wear red and white? Mm. There's, like, seven of them. Yeah. In the top division, you all wear red and white. And it's like, oh, I've got a way away kit again <laughs> today. It's like, well, I'm not surprised. You're yeah. all wearing the same bloody colours. Um, but there we go. Okay, now we can finally simulate this fifth final season and Come on. see how we get on. There we go, another league title, and it's a Boy, dominant one. Like that one, it yeah. all the way. Yeah, how you boys doing down there? Because uh, yeah. we're Leeds champions once again with 87 points. Lost, lost five, five. And two of them were at the start, only lost three. Our goal, the main our goal average is well at 103. Yeah, what an extreme season we've yeah. had there. It feels like maybe once we were out of the Champions League, uh, we decided to actually do quite well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 27 goals for Lubicic. Lavaggia still got 24, even though you know he's he's losing a bit of physical prowess. He's still done really well. And even our, 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 uh, our new signings come in and done quite well there. He's got a 7.46 average rating when he has played. Really nice. And the first this time we've had the highest amount of clean sheets. Chucking in more players up front have yeah. actually done better for us defensively. Yeah. Insane stuff. Uh, let's take a look then. Other competitions. How have we done? League phase, and then we faced Dinamo in the second round of the cup and got eliminated. Yeah. So no cup. For, for us in this one. Uh, we'll take a look at the league phase of the Champions League. Oh, 30 seconds. <laughs> so close to the top eight. We won one game against Charleroi in That's Belgium. That's expected win, isn't it? Yeah, really? we drew to Athletic. That's a good result. Yeah, at home. And we lost six. Not too bad, actually. No. Like, there's not we one Tonkin in there, is no, there? No, we didn't get hammered, did we? Just a couple of 4 twos there from Leverkusen and Salzburg. I mean, to go to Man City and lose 3-1, I'll take that. You scored as well. Yeah, go to the San Siro. Yeah. And only lose 3-2 to AC Milan. That's a hell of a result, isn't it? Yeah, not bad at all. Uh, I think we actually did made quite a good of account of ourselves. Yeah. Ajax there uh, won the, the most. They won seven. Who won the Champions League? I'm just curious. PSG beat Man City in the final. Who have been winning it? Because we haven't been in it at all. So I've never really looked. Liverpool, Man City have won it and Real Madrid. Okay, fair enough. Chelsea won it the first season. Not bad at all then. No. Let's take no. a look at the goals tally. Who has been scoring? So Lubicic scored the most. As you can see here, he's now 25. He's our best player. Player. Absolutely phenomenal player as well. If you manage to keep hold of him in the five year rebuild, you can't afford, to sell, him. You you can't afford, afford to, sell to sell him. Nope. He is very, very good indeed. Lavaja still 29 goals and 17 assists. Uh, and Philip Tietz managed to get 21 goals, who is, who is kind of like our rotation guy, played 19 games yeah. off the bench. So they've done really well there. Fantastic stuff. Uh, the transfer market. Oh, get out every single time. <laughs> 70. That's over double that we've, what we've had. Like three times more. Three times, yeah. That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, fair enough. I think FM's getting used to us doing a five season rebuild so we yeah. can start doing a six season. Don't we? <laughs> Inflation on well, the six season. What, should we just not do the first season and just then get do it. five from then on? I used to do that, didn't I? <laughs> I used to simulate the first season, then do five years. Yeah. That's what we used to start off doing because we started in the summer and I was like, well, I know who's good at transfers. Yeah. Now, so. Oh, well. Right. Two questions. First off, if you go to the ground in split, first off, what is the atmosphere really like? Yeah. Do you find that with the running track, it is difficult? But also, what type of food do they sell there? And what is the food like? And finally, Dad, what is the challenge for the five-year rebuild that people take on on the Patreon? I'm going to do... We've won the league three times. Yeah. Try and beat that. Try and beat that. We've done so a you double. Can get four in five years. We actually done a double. So if you can do a treble somewhere along the line by winning something different, go for that. But my, my challenge is you. I don't want to make it too hard because it's hard to do anything else. Just try and beat us winning three leagues. Yeah. You've got a you've got a really good team and the budget we've just given you. Wow. Yeah. You've got a good tactic. So I think all you need to do is just improve one or two players. That you've got the money. Is really good. Yeah. yeah. You've got the money to do it. So 
A lot of people uh, download the save game file because they like to steal the tactic. Yeah. This is a prime example of one that might be quite good to steal. Competition reputation is actually up to 13th, which, as we can see here, has gone up because 2024, it was down to 18th in 2022. So we've gone up five positions there. Yeah. Uh, we've built the nation. So if you like to continue that, get them into the top 10 as well. That would be great. Thank you very much for watching. Leave all your Don't suggestions the in the comments. Buttons as well. Exactly. We've got a big target to go for. Come on, let's get for it. thousand subscribers. It's Come kind on. of out of reach. Yeah. But if we make a big push for it, it's definitely possible. Yeah. Just get push that the button. The wall. Just push that button. Just do it. Right. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Monday for another rebuild. Bye-bye.